Hi students, welcome to session 2 of Changes Around Us. Students, do you remember what we studied in the previous session? Yes, we studied about changes around us, the types of changes that occur around us, like natural and man-made changes, slow and fast changes, desirable and undesirable changes. So, in today's session, we are going to continue about the types of changes that occur around us or happen around us. So, changes that occur around us can be broadly categorized as reversible and irreversible changes depending on whether or not they can be reversed. So, let us start with today's session and move on about reversible and irreversible as well as physical and chemical changes. Yes, reversible changes. So, what is meant by this type of change? Yes, students, those changes which can be reversed are called reversible changes. Reversible changes are temporary. That means they occur for a short period of time. Or we can say that they can be reversed in a short period of time. So, these are the changes that can be reversed. For example, if we take a balloon and if we blow air into it. Now, when we slowly re release its air after some time, it comes back to its original position. So, if we will take a balloon and if we are blowing air into it, after some time or immediately, you can slowly release its air and you will come to see that a balloon has come back to its original position. So this is a type of a reversible change. And so we can say that this type of change is a temporary change. So basically what we can say about reversible change? Yes, it is a change that can be undone or reversed. It is a change that can be undone or reversed as we discussed. So a reversible change might change how material looks but it doesn't create any new material. This is what is about a reversible change. So now let us discuss some of the examples and some of the processes which are the examples of reversible changes. Yes. So the first one is melting. Now students, melting is an example of reversible change. How? Like we take, if we take an example of a melted chocolate, a melted chocolate can be changed back to solid chocolate by cooling. So, melting is a process and it is an example of a reversible change. Why? Because melted chocolate can be changed back into solid chocolate by cooling. And so, vice versa means a melted chocolate, if it is changed by cooling, so a solid chocolate can also be changed into a melted chocolate. Right? If we keep it at room temperature. So if we are keeping solid chocolate at room temperature after some time, we can observe, we can notice that it has melted. So these changes are reversible. And that is why melting process is an example of a reversible change. Yes. Second process is freezing. Students, freezing 
is also an example of a reversible change. Like we can freeze orange juice to make ice lollies. And ice lollies can also be changed back to orange juice. How? If we keep it at room temperature. So you can see that an orange juice when freezed it will be converted into ice lollies. And ice lollies if we keep it at room temperature after some time we can observe that we have obtained orange juice from it. So this is also a kind of a reversible change. Let us see another example. Yes. Boiling, evaporation and condensation. Now you are familiar, you all are familiar with these terms. Boiling, evaporation and condensation. These three are the processes and examples of reversible changes. How? We can discuss it with one of the examples. Like if we could capture all the steam that is made when a kettle boils, we could turn it back to water by cooling it. So, if we capture all the steam that is made when a kettle boils. Now, when a kettle boils, the container is totally closed. A kettle is totally closed. Okay? And, obviously, if we are boiling it, then, after some time, when it reaches to a certain temperature, it will start evaporating. Means, the liquid, the water, if we take water, so water will start boiling and after some time, when it is evaporated, it is converted into steam or water vapor. But we need to capture this steam. Now if we capture this steam after some time or immediately, we could turn it back into water by the process of condensation. Means, what is meant by condensation? It is the process of the change of the state from, from yes, gas to liquid. So the steam or water vapor which we have captured when a kettle boiled or the water in the kettle boils, then after condensing it or after cooling it or by cooling it, we could get back the water which was first boiled. So these changes, these all changes are reversible changes. Because by condensing it, we can get the water. By boiling the water, it will change into steam. And steam can be converted into water again. So boiling, evaporation, condensation, all are the examples of reversible changes. Yes. Another one is dissolving. Now, dissolving is also an example of reversible change. How? We can discuss it with the help of an example. Like when salt is mixed with water, some amount of salt is mixed in a glass of water, it disappears. Now, how it disappears? What is the reason behind it? Yes, it dissolves in the water and then it becomes a salty water. So, when salt is mixed with water, it disappears because it dissolves in the water. This process is known as dissolving and the water becomes a salty water. Now, you must be thinking that what is what has been reversed over here? How can we consider dissolving process as a reversible change? Yes, we can consider it. 
Now here you have seen just one process, just one step of getting salty water. But we can get the salt back again by boiling of the water. We can get back the salt again by boiling of the water. So now we can say that dissolving is a reversible change. Yes, it is a reversible change because by boiling of the water we can get the salt because that leaves the salt behind and the water evaporates. So we can say that we have got the salt again. Yes, we can say that. So there are some substances which dissolve when we mix them with water. And that is why they are categorized into two classes. That is substances that dissolve in water are called soluble substances. And substances that do not dissolve in water are called insoluble substances. So, when a substance dissolves, it looks like it disappears. But in fact, it has just mixed with water to make a transparent liquid called a solution. So, we can say that when solute mixes with solvent, it forms a solution. So remember that whenever any solute is mixed with solvent, we can take an example of water, it forms a solution. It disappears. Rather we can say that it has mixed with the liquid or the water. So whenever we mix sugar with water, the sugar dissolves to make a transparent solution. Salt even dissolves in water. So what we can say that substances like salt and sugar that dissolve in water are called soluble substances. And substances like petrol, kerosene, oil that do not dissolve in water are called insoluble substances. So when we mix even sand or flour with water, they do not dissolve. So we can consider sand and flour also as insoluble substances. Now, soluble and insoluble substances are a part of dissolving process. And as we discussed, that dissolving is an example of a reversible change. So how can we separate some of the mixtures that are soluble in water or insoluble? Yes. Sieving is one such method while in which a mixture which is made up of solid particles of different sizes for example sand and gravel they can be separated by sieving. Even a mixture of water and an insoluble substance like sand can be separated by the process of filtration. That means by filtering a mixture of water and an insoluble substance like sand. Even there is one more such process by which we can separate some of the mixtures like if we dissolve the solvent water, we get a salty water, that means a solution. So the salt disappears into the water and we can separate the salt from the water by boiling of the solution. That means by the process of evaporation in which the water will evaporate until it has all gone. The salt will be left behind and if we collect the water vapor that evaporates, we can cool it to form water again or to get back the water again. So this is all about dissolving. Now let us revise again about reversible changes. 
Yes, changes that can be reversed are called reversible changes. Now there are some other examples too which we can discuss. So just listen it carefully. Students, what happens to an ice cream if you do not finish it quickly? Yes, have you ever noticed? It melts. Can you change the molten ice cream back into a solid? Yes, of course. Just keep it in the freezer. And molten ice cream can be changed back to its solid form. Thus we can say that melting is a reversible change. Even melting of butter and chocolate are also reversible. Now what about changes like condensation, freezing and evaporation of materials take place? Yes, if you take out some ice cubes from the freezer and keep them outside, what will happen? You can try this experiment at home also. Ice will take heat from the surroundings and it will melt. So when this water or the molten ice is heated for some time, water starts to boil. That means liquid starts to evaporate and steam escapes from the container. And now, if you hold a lid over the container, the steam will liquefy or it will condense into small droplets of water on coming in contact with the cool lid or the cold lid. And you can see some of the droplets of water on that lid. So, these droplets of water are simply the water which we boiled. So this water can be cooled down and then it can be kept in the freezer to form ice again. So what we can conclude out of this that the three states of water or specifically the three physical states of water are reversible. double at the stop and it can be changed by heating or cooling. So remember this, on heating ice melts and converts into water, water on cooling changes into ice at 0 degree Celsius and this type of change in which a substance can be brought back to its original form is called a reversible change. Right? So, this was all about reversible change and I hope that you have learned about reversible change.